All right, you big stiff idiots, welcome back to We Need To Talk. Now, I know I haven't been here for a couple of weeks now, have I? I spent a couple of weeks on holiday, and now I'm in self-isolation. As you can tell, I am not sat in the usual glossy football daily studios. No, I'm at home in a homemade studio in my own front room. I mean, I've tried my best. It's not the best, but it'll have to do. Anyway, this is of course the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. The seven days that has seen my new hero, Bruno Fernandes, singing his own chant. Bruno, 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 he came past sporting like Cristiano. He goes left, he goes right, make defenders look. He's our Portuguese magnifico. <laughs> Cesc Fabregas pretty much summing up how we're all feeling. Good morning, my neighbors! And famous football commentator Clive Tilsley having to shift from football to the kitchen. Very important at this difficult time to uh, stay in the rhythm of uh, commentary. So welcome to uh, our kitchen and live coverage of our supper preparation. Here's basil, pepper, oh, garlic, tomato puree. Anyway, this week we need to talk about Football Manager 2020. Most people like us at Football Daily right now are sat at home in self-isolation or they are quite sensibly social distancing themselves from everybody else. And to be honest, if you're anything like me, you're currently stuck inside, bored out of your mind, can't think of anything else to do. And when that is the case, there's only one place to turn. Football Manager. If you don't know what Footy Man is by now, then come off this video, unsubscribe from Football Daily and keep yourself in self-isolation because it's quite frankly unacceptable. If you do know what Football Manager is, then give yourself a pat on the back because today you're in for an absolute treat because I am going to simulate the rest of the 2019-20 season on Footy Man 2020. Now I know what you're thinking at home, well, what's the point in doing this? You can't do it accurately enough. You're not gonna be able to get the correct results. It's a waste of time. Well, shut your dirty mouths because I'm giving it a good bloody go. I've been scouring the fan sites. I'm talking your sort it out SIs. I'm talking your FM scouts. I've been talking to some of Football Manager's biggest YouTubers like Work The Space to see if this is even possible. How can it be done? Well, step forward one man. AML on FM Scout, who does up-to-date databases for each game week during the season. So today, I present you with a football manager that starts on March the 9th with every single, or as close as we could get, league results right, every fixture played, every goal in place. It's near perfection to within three points. There are a few other holes. I couldn't get every single injury in there. So I'm afraid Harry Kane is playing, Marcus Rashford is playing, some of them are in there, John McGinn's still got a broken ankle, sorry Big John. And it's also totally impossible in the game editor for Football Manager to get cup competitions correct for the future. I don't know why, I don't know what's going on, we just couldn't do it. So today, despite real football being postponed, we are going to simulate the season from March the 9th onward with all previous results, pretty much, correct to see who wins the titles across Europe, who gets relegated, who gets promoted, who finishes in the top four, who gets sacked, the lot, you name it, we'll simulate it or attempt to. Okay, here you can see we're on March the 9th, the results are correct to within three points, so pretty much perfect. We've tried our very, very best for this, it took absolutely ages. So the Premier League is pretty much right, the La Liga is pretty much right, Serie A, pretty much right, the Bundesliga and Liga, all 95% perfect. It's the 9th of March, let's see what happens. I'm gonna be simulating pretty much round by round. I'm gonna pick out the best fixtures and go from there. Let's do this. Whilst this simulation is going on, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you wanna see more Football Manager content, then let's get this video to like, 5,000 likes and we'll see what we can do. Leave a comment as well to let me know what you're doing in self-isolation. And as always, hit subscribe, turn notifications on. We need it more than ever right now. Okay, so we've holidayed our way to April the 6th. Let's see what's been going on firstly in the Premier League. The first thing I noticed straight away 
Liverpool have lost their second game. Now, in my holiday period, they were due to face Manchester City. So, it wasn't an overly surprising loss, I guess. Man United still up there in fifth. Let's have a look at some of the results. Bruno Fernandes getting the winner. Get in there, big Bruno. Against Tottenham Hotspur, Jose Mourinho. Getting schooled by Oli once again. What a surprise. Love you, Bruno, as well, by the way. The big one, Man City versus Liverpool, though. David Silva and Rodri. Rodri getting the goals there. Rest of the league, West Ham. They must be gutted about that. They were 2-1 up against Chelsea in the 59th minute and let it slide. Giroud getting a double there. OK, so the Premier League is pretty much, as you'd expect, Liverpool top. West Ham have dropped into the relegation zone at April the 6th. In Germany, it is still extremely tight. Bayern Munich just three points clear of Leipzig, by the way. Dortmund are only five points off. Mönchengladbach are still in the hunt and the Leverkusen. This league is sh hot. Okay, so the big fixture I've pretty much identified from our holiday period in Germany. Dortmund losing at home to Bayern Munich 3-2. Erling Braut Haaland getting his customary goal in the 20th minute, but Lewandowski, Coutinho and Perisic seeing him off. What's going on over in France? Okay, over in France, it's all to play. No, it's not, is it? I might not even bother looking at this league, to be honest. PSG are 21 points clear of Marseille. Okay, so we're at April the 21st. We're back in the Premier League. Liverpool have, of course, been crowned champions. They're currently sat on 91 points. We're going to delve into just how and when it happened in a second. Some other things I noticed. Norwich making a big old charge, up to 19th on 27 points. Man United also as well, up to fourth in the Premier League. What on earth has been going on over the last three, three or so weeks? Let's delve in. Okay, so on Saturday, the 11th of April, Arsenal lost at home, 3-1 against Norwich. Todd Cantwell, Emiliano Buendia, what is going on here? Liverpool, of course, that 3-0 victory, enough to see them crown champions. Leicester as well, dropping points at home to Crystal Palace, according to Football Manager. Man United then had two players sent off as they lost 1-0 at home to Bournemouth. Crushing result for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Tottenham taking advantage as well, beating off Carlo Ancelotti's Everton in that race for the top four. 3-2, Lucas Moore, a 90th minute winner. What a game that was. And here we can see why Norwich have climbed up the table so effectively. They beat West Ham at home, Buendia getting another goal, dropped in real life by Daniel Farr in the team in Football Manager, and enough to beat West Ham comfortably, 2-0. David Moyes must be on 10 I can't believe it. David Moyes is gone. David Moyes sacked, according to Football Manager, and if there's one man to replace him, it had to be... Kevin Nolan, the current caretaker manager of West Ham United. Gold and Sullivan have got rid of Moyes, according to Football Manager, and in comes Big Kev. Over in Spain, the gap is five points between Barca and Madrid. Atletico still struggling, still 19 points behind Barcelona, but have qualified for the Europa League. Why? Because they beat Sociedad in the final of the Copa del Rey. As I said, we couldn't get all of the cup competitions fixtures right, so that's pure chance. I've just gone on to Germany and all hell has broken loose. Leipzig are top of the Bundesliga, two points clear of Bayern Munich. What on earth has gone on? I can tell you exactly what's gone on. Bayern Munich lost at home to Fortuna Dusseldorf because Audrey Zola was sent off in the 12th minute. It's absolute chaos over in Germany. Coutinho's goal, not enough because Kalvnaki got the job done. And Bayern dropped more points the very next week against Leverkusen. Kai Havertz getting a goal just one minute after Lewandowski. One all draw. Leipzig won 2 0. Leipzig are two points clear at the top of the Bundesliga. In Italy, it is unbelievably close right now. Juventus are top by one point ahead of Lazio, who are still flying. Inter Milan are just two points off the top spot. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. All right, so we've moved it on to the 30th of April. Liverpool, obviously, champions on 94 points. Still haven't lost another game, other than that Man City loss, according to Football Manager. They've won 31 matches. Well on course for a 100-plus point Centurion season. Manchester United have two games in hand. They look a little bit off the pace for Leicester. What on earth has been going on? It was a massive round of fixtures. 
Okay, let's jump straight in. Arsenal beat Leicester City at the Emirates. Torreira, Nicolas, Pepe, Yuri Tiedemann's goal made no difference. Chelsea did enough to beat Man City as well. Christian Pulisic, 85th minute winner in that one. No wonder they've been flying up the table. Man United, a two-all draw at home against Sheffield United. It's a horrible result. You can see it, can't you? Odion Igalo, King Odion, the love of my life, getting a goal in that one, as did Scott McSouse. But not good enough for Man United. Two-all, that's poor. Norwich as well. They lost at home against Brighton. Timu Puki's goal, not enough there because Neil Mopai was on fire. West Ham as well, that's actually quite a big result for them. One all against Wolves. Let's keep going, what else happened up to this sim date? Tottenham won the North London derby. 2-1, Harry Winks and Deli Alley. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's goal, not enough there. And Everton lost at home. That's a shock result. Meanwhile, if we go a little bit further forward to the 29th of April, Leicester City 2-0 against Sheffield United. James Madison and Yuri Tielemans. Sheffield United's hopes of European football just slip in a little bit as we look at this league table. They've dropped down to 10th place. Palace, Hodgson doing a great job. He's got them up to 9th. And Arsenal are now just three, oh, they're two points off 5th place. Arteta, he's doing okay. As for the relegation zone, it's pretty much a four horse race now. Norwich, Villa, West Ham, Watford. There are just two points separating 20th and 17th. It is all to play for at the foot of the table. Over in Spain, Barcelona have run away with it effectively. They're eight points clear of Real Madrid. Atletico have fallen well off the pace, as we said earlier. Sevilla still doing all right. Hatafe still plugging away. Go on, Hatafe. They're up in fourth. And the reason Hatafe are still in that top four race is they beat Real Madrid at the Bernabeu in Syria, and it is all still to play for. A five point gaps open up between Juve and Inter, but Lazio still three points off the title. Milan are having a whiffer down there in eighth place, 48 points. They're no good. Write them off. Here's the one I wanted to see the Bundesliga. Bayern Munich are one point clear of Leipzig. A little gap has opened up to Borussia Dortmund and Mönchengladbach, who are still in the hunt though, still just four points off. Leipzig, what's gone on? Leipzig, that's where it was. Nagelsmann went back to Hoffenheim and lost. Oh dear, 2-0. Kramerich and Adamian getting goals. Deary me, that's a bad result for Leipzig. Ligue 1, PSG, 20 points clear still. All right, I'm holidaying to Friday the 8th of May. By the way, if the lighting in this room has changed, it's because the light outside's gone out and I am using a really shitty light. So I'm hoping it still looks okay and passable. Who knows? Okay, we're at May the 8th and I'm looking at the bottom of the table. A gap has opened up five points between 20th place Norwich and 17th place Watford. <laughs> to be honest with you, they're four points clear. That bottom three are looking perilous. Right now, West Ham, Villa and Norwich, I'm sorry to say you're in bad, bad places. Kevin Nolan has not been able to do the job. What's gone on here? Kevin Nolan's out the door, of course. He was only a caretaker. Juan Carlos Oliva has come in to the team. Who the f*** is this guy? And the big fixture from Saturday the 2nd of May, Watford beat Norwich. And this is why that gap has started to open up. Cabaselli, that is a huge goal in the course of this season. Bayern are one point clear still. Mönchengladbach have gone ahead of Dortmund who must have dropped some points because they are still in... Were they in fourth? I can't remember. In Syria, I'm sorry to say for everybody who thought Lazio or Inter might get the job done this season, it doesn't look like it. Juve are five points clear at the summit of Syria with a game in hand as well. Maurizio Sarri is going to win his first league title as a manager. And I can tell you exactly why Juve are so bloody far clear. They beat Lazio 2-0 at the Aventus Stadium, probably in a match that was played behind closed doors. Douglas Costa 5 and 54 minutes. Devastating result for Lazio and an even more devastating result for Inter. They lost away at Roma. Okay, so we do have some major news. Marcelo Bielsa has quit Leeds and he's joined Bournemouth because they've sacked Eddie Howe. I, I don't believe what I'm seeing. Bielsa has gone to Bournemouth. 
And he's not the only managerial shifter because there is some big news coming out of Manchester United, let me tell you now. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has left the club and Maximiliano Allegri has joined. Allegri has come to Old Trafford. Okay, just looking at the Premier League table, there is massive news everywhere. Liverpool, of course, still champions, still a point off that Centurion season that Manchester City had with one game to play. Manchester City, 20 points clear, but confirming Champions League football, as did Chelsea. And it's not good news at the bottom of the table, is it? West Ham have been relegated. They are bottom. I don't know what has gone on for a lever down there. Aston Villa also being relegated. Norwich still stand a chance. It's going to come down to potentially the final day for relegation because Norwich have a game in hand and they are just three points off of Watford. Okay, let's look at La Liga. I presume Barcelona will have been crowned champions. They still haven't. Still two games to play over in Spain, but they are six points clear. They're as good as champions. Atletico have also had a little bit of a rise. They're up to third. Hatafe have dropped out of the top four, but they're still in the hunt for European football in fifth. Here's the one we're all waiting for though, the Bundesliga. The Bundesliga is on a knife edge. Leipzig are top again, I can't believe it. 68 points, they're one point clear of Bayern Munich. Munch and Gladbach are still in the hunt, just three points off the title. Dortmund have shot the bed, shot the bed massively, nine points off the title now. Over in Syria, Juve are still six points clear, so it looks like they've dropped a few points uh, ahead of Lazio who are on 78 points, Inter on 73 points. It looks like they're going to be the top three. I'm sad to say it still looks like Juve are going to win the season. OK, so there's just one match week left in pretty much all of the major leagues. The Bundesliga is all to play for. Probably the most exciting one, unsurprisingly. La Liga and Serie A kind of are, but I think Barca and Juve are going to win those. The Premier League, plenty to play for in the top four race, but the rest of it's kind of gone to shit. So, Football Manager, how does the season end? All right, the final game week has indeed been played. Let's see how the table finished in the Premier League. Starting at the top spot, Liverpool setting the record for the most points in the Premier League season. Football manager said they finish on 102, winning 33 matches. An incredible feat. Man City, a pretty decent second, 82 points. Pep will be disappointed though with that, won't he? The top four. I'm absolutely delighted. Chelsea get in there, just 67. And Man United get that fourth spot. Buzzing, 65 points. Wolves, Tottenham, Leicester sh the bed massively towards the end of the season. Finish fifth, sixth and seventh. Arsenal, you're eighth. Down in the relegation, Quagmire. I'm sorry, it's Norwich, Villa and West Ham that go down. Of course, they sacked David Moyes midway through the season, didn't they? They replaced him by Kevin Nolan. Then they brought in Juan Carlos Oliva. It's all gone wrong for them. They'll be playing their football in the championship next season. Let's see what happened on the final days. Who got the crucial goals? OK, Manchester United, actually lucky to scrape into that top four, given that they dropped points away to Crystal Palace. Bruno Fernandes... My hero still scoring goals, though. Sheffield United as well, massive result against Chelsea. Arsenal getting the job done against Watford. That pretty much sent them down. Man City pumping Norwich. Ugly scenes, 5-0 to send the Canaries crashing out of the Premier League. Liverpool, it was a win against Newcastle that got them their final points to get them over the 100-point mark, pretty much. Any other fixtures? Hey, Palace beat Tottenham. Jose Mourinho's job must be on the line. I mean... He's still in charge at the moment, but if I go on job security, I can imagine it's hanging very, very thin. It's not. It's, it, I mean, it's secure. La Liga. Yeah, Barcelona unsurprisingly getting a win and the final match day to secure the points, being Alaves 1-0 there. Real Madrid also winning, but it wasn't enough. They finished four points off the running. Atletico Madrid did pull themselves up. I can't believe what I'm seeing at Atletico Madrid. Diego Simeone has left the club, sacked by Atletico Madrid. Here's the one we all care about, though, the Bundesliga. Come on, Leipzig, come on, Leipzig, come on, Leipzig, come on, Leipzig. 
What's going on, league table? Leipzig are the champions of Germany. One point ahead of Bayern Munich. I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's absolutely monumental in Germany. Nagelsmann, you absolute genius. Winning the league. 71 points, 21 wins. Syria as well. It happened again. Maurizio Sarri's first league title, 89 points, a pretty impressive season. They kind of ran away with it, finished five points clear of Lazio though. Inter actually struggled. They finished 12 points off the title. Okay, there was no exact science behind the cup competitions. We couldn't get the initial results into the system, but we can see what happened anyway, randomly. Get excited because we've got a new winner. Manchester City won the Champions League beating Liverpool 2-1. Pep Guardiola actually won the Champions League again. Would you bloody believe it? They beat him 2-1 in the final. What on earth happened here? It actually went to extra time. Gabriel Jesus getting a 108th minute winner. It, it's unbelievable scenes. Manchester City won the Champions League after extra time over Liverpool. We have a new champion of Europe. As for the FA Cup, Again, it was Manchester City. They beat Chelsea 1-0 thanks to a Raheem Sterling goal. I mean, Man City actually had an insane season, pretty much. They won the Champions League. They won the FA Cup. What else did they win? Yeah, they won the Champions League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, and finished second in the Prem. Man City actually had an unbelievable season then. They won three trophies, so a sort of treble. Liverpool won the Premier League. Who actually had the better season? I'm not too sure. Vote in the poll up there as to who had the better season. Was it Liverpool or was it Manchester City? So there we have it. Football manager simulating the entire season. This took some serious work, by the way. So thanks to everybody at FM Scout, Sort It Out SI, Work The Space, AML, everybody who made this possible. If you want to go back and look at anything and pause it and see the results in more detail, you can. I'm also going to make this save file available. I'll put a link in the description below to that. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Football Manager content from us, then get this video to 5,000 likes and we'll see what we can do. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks very, very much for watching. Still in self-isolation. It's got dark. I've been here about two hours. Thanks very much for watching. Alfie, you